Was the UCF game a sign of things to come for the Oklahoma Sooners, or do they right the ship against Kansas? We'll talk about that on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to let you know when new episodes drop. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Thank you for joining us. That's Josh Helmer. You can follow him on Twitter at Josh on ref. I'm John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John nine Williams. And the show is at locked on Sooners and Josh big time game this weekend up in Lawrence, Kansas against a team that I don't think anybody in Sooner nation or really across the country is sleeping on the Kansas Jayhawks. They've looked like a really, really good football team, especially on the offensive side of the football. And I think by and large, most people are going into this game with a healthy amount, healthy amount of respect for Lance Leipold's crew. Well, and when last we left you, we sort of cliffhangered it. And the question that was posed to us from Sooner Cowboys was, Hey, coming out of this UCF game, the big question is, do things now get worse defensively for Oklahoma? Because UCF was able to expose the defense uh, really in quarters two and three, I would say. Final drive, yes, wasn't great. But uh, by and large, what we're talking about there, quarters two and three, right? First quarter was awesome. Quarters two and three were not. And then the other part of that it was, was OU wasn't able to expose a UCF weakness on its defense which was the the run defense component. Oh, you actually came in just a little bit south of what uh, UCF surrenders in terms of run defense on an average game by game basis. So uh, the question is, was that a sign of things to come for Oklahoma? I don't think it was. I think that we're set to see Oklahoma perhaps come out and author up and deliver a statement type performance versus Kansas. I don't know that you get into the whole, for me, that it was the hangover effect from the Texas game. I think that UCF was just game, and uh, Oklahoma for a couple of quarters didn't play all that great, John. So I'm optimistic that, no, it was not a sign of things, especially to come defensively. The run game, okay, you could talk me into that, (laughs) okay? But uh, defensively, I think we're going to see a better performance against, as you said, John, and I agree with you, an offense that, even minus its starting quarterback is going to test Oklahoma big time. It really will. And and I do think that Kansas will be able to find some, some winning moments in this game, but based on what I've seen, you know, whether it's UCF or even before, I feel like this team is just ready to compete, you know, for all kinds of things, whether it's a big 12 title, a college football playoff berth. I just feel like they're that good. Now, are there things that they had to clean up? Absolutely. But I feel like also coming out of a bye, sometimes it's not necessarily the Texas hangover. It's just being out of a rhythm a little bit on both sides of the football. You you didn't play the week before. So, you know, Oklahoma's momentum was kind of slowed down by that bye week being there. It's it's a great place for the bye because, you know, dead smack in the middle of the season. Now you can just start building towards the end of the season. But to me, there's a little bit for a team that does play with such a rhythm like Oklahoma does offensively in particular, but I even feel like there's such a feel on defense to just being consistent and and playing in the game. I think it matters there too, but for the offense in particular, I think not playing the week before might've gotten them out of the rhythm that they wanted to be in a little bit. And then maybe not really having the success on the ground that they wanted to have threw them off a little bit at times too. So, you know, and then a credit to UCF. They they came out with a really strong game plan. They tested Oklahoma's wide receivers on the outside and a couple of times it burned them. And that was just enough for Oklahoma to win the game. But ultimately, you know, this is a team that's a really, really good football team and improving week by week by week. And they're finding ways to win games. And that's the thing that matters the most is find the ways to win the game. This is what we saw at a TCU a year ago is okay. They weren't a perfect team. Their defense was actually worse 
than Oklahoma's this year. And in, in some areas, it was worse than Oklahoma's last year. They were not a great defense, but they found ways to win games late in games, whether it was Max Duggan, you know, just carrying this team on a two minute drill, or it was the defense making a timely stop. That was the biggest difference between TCU and Oklahoma a year ago is that TCU played big and big moments. Oklahoma didn't come through in big moments this year. That narrative has changed for Oklahoma. They're coming through in big moments, whether it's the SMU game, the Texas game, or this past week against UCF, when the game is on the line, Oklahoma is coming through. Can they continue to do that every single week? We'll see. Hopefully we're not playing close games like that every single week, but I really do feel like there's a confidence about this team and they're going to write the things that were wrong last week. And they're going to come out playing a little bit better than what they did a week ago. Not that everything is structurally set up the same, you know, Kansas being spread option uh, type attack. There are some similarities between Kansas and UCF, interestingly enough, just in terms of, if nothing else, the stats book, right? Uh, here, here's a couple of teams, UCF last week, obviously, top five nationally rushing offense. Kansas, not too far off that pace. They're number 12 nationally. Meanwhile, both teams, not very good, right? Uh, some of the nations, it's, it's which is ironic, right? You would think uh, if you're that good running the football, maybe that would improve your run defense a little bit for those two teams, but it has not. Uh, both UCF and Kansas, not good run defenses. So just kind of weird that in back-to-back -back weeks, again, not that it's just this mirror image and they run the exact same offense. They don't. But uh, statistically, if you can have success in one area for Oklahoma like you did last week, really both sides of the football, statistically, these two teams are similar in consecutive weeks, which is just kind of a weird happening on the schedule. Well, if there's one area where they're not very similar, it's in pass defense. Kansas gives up, you know, a higher completion percentage, more yards against the pass than UCF did. UCF was actually one of the better, you know, pass defenses in the country going into last week and probably one of the better ones they'll face all season long now. And, uh, you know, Dylan Gabriel still had a pretty good game. I mean, it wasn't a great game, but he had a pretty good game and it was enough to help Oklahoma win the football game. So yeah, there are a lot of similarities. I mean, Oklahoma needs to find a way to make things happen on the ground. They need to be able to stop the run, stop the quarterback run game. And they've got a quarterback that is capable of making plays through the air and some good wide receivers as well. Like this is a capable offense that can hurt you if you're not structurally schematically sound. And I mean, that, that, uh, little read option where they bring it out wide and John race, you know, finds the guy wide open after Woody commits to the run. Like I'm sure Kansas saw that and they're going to try and put something in there to build off of that. Well, it may not be that exact same play, but they're going to try and work something in that's similar to that, that tries to take advantage of Oklahoma's aggressiveness. That's somewhat the downside to being an aggressive defense is sometimes you're going to get hit with misdirection and that, and that can beat you sometimes. But I, I expect Oklahoma to come back and be, you know, more structurally sound than they were last week. Speaking of the running game, got a big, big uh, return coming up this Saturday uh, for the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll talk about that after we talk to you about some, some things here after our break. Prize picks. It's the spot for daily fantasy sports. They're taking over, ladies and gentlemen, and you should uh, be a part of testing your skills on prize picks. This football season, it's the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Prize picks, really simple to play, just more than. Less than on a given set of numbers. If you think Dylan Gabriel's throwing for more yards than Prize Picks uh, has the number set at, then roll with Dylan Gabriel. For example, it's really simple to play. Again, I, I love that I can submit my picks and my entry in less than sixty seconds. Oh, by the way, uh, when you win, quick withdrawals. So that part's uh, nice as well. Go to PrizePicks.com backslash locked on college use our code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars one more time go to prizepicks.com backslash locked on college use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars daily fantasy sports made easy 
And these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. If you've ever been a part of a hiring situation, you know that sometimes what you're seeing on the resume and what you're getting in the interview may not be enough for you to make a confident decision about who you're hiring. Sometimes it, it backfires. Well, LinkedIn jobs has these screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience. So you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It goes beyond the CV, beyond the resume. So go check out LinkedIn jobs. It's why small businesses are rating LinkedIn jobs. Number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So go Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Tawi Walker set to return after a one game absence, hopefully to bring the hammer against the Kansas Jayhawks. If you know much about Tawi and his running style, you'll know he's going to be eager to get back in the game against a run defense that can be had if Oklahoma is able to take advantage of it. Yeah, and he could play a big-time role in this game uh, really throughout, but definitely, I, you know, Tommy Walker, think about late in the game, potentially if the rain does become a factor and it's a slop track out there, but, you know, it's blustery. Dr. Kevin Clazel on the radio side is who gives us our weather updates. And when I hear the word blustery, I say, uh, no, thanks. Don't don't necessarily want to be outside in any of that. But that being said, it, it's going to be cold. The windshield is going to feel like it's in the 20s. Uh, I think temps are looking at the 30s for this game. At least that's one forecast, at least for the moment for the game. Wind gust up to 20 miles per hour. So all of that, again, is... It, it lends itself to, okay, who, who's going to run the football better, and especially late in the game when it's cold and you're tired, and there's a part of you somewhere in that mind that says, man, do I really care to be out here for one more quarter? That's Mr. Tawi Walker time. Yeah, he's the dude that's got that edge that can really grind out the tough yards on this team. And, you know, at, at times he has been missed when he's not been getting a, a big chunk of the workload. I think this could be an opportunity to see him get some big time playing time. But I don't think they're going to shy away from Gavin Sawchuk and Marcus Major. I mean, we, we've seen that they're very much willing to ride Marcus Major, giving him big, big, heavy workloads. And I mean, he got 18 carries again this past week. Gavin Sawchuk finally kind of had a little bit of a breakout for this season. We'll see if he can build on that uh, with some big runs, not just the 30 yard run, but you know, the seven, the eight yard run. And I think as much as we want to see the 15, 20, 30 yard runs, we need to see more of the seven, eight yard runs on first down that puts your offense in a much more manageable, you know, game flow as you can get into a second down and two, and, and then you can do whatever you want out of that as opposed to, okay, it's second and eight now because you only picked up two yards on, on your first down run. I think going into this week, you need to have a bit of a run heavier approach, but don't shy away from the passing game. Now, obviously if the winds are as high as they're going to be and it is blustery down there. Then you're, you're a lot of your passing game is going to be at or behind the line of scrimmage, or it's going to be short stuff over the middle, as opposed to, you know, attacking deep with, uh, you know, with Nick Anderson or Jaleel Farouk, but this is going to be one of those games where it's going to have to be a physical game up front and you're going to have to be the physical aggressor in this one. And Kansas isn't going to back away. They're not going to shy away. They're going to bring their, their a game. They're not going to expect you to, or they're not going to lay down for you. They're going to, they're going to make you gain every single yard. But I think also this is one of those areas where, okay, Dylan Gabriel and, and what he's able to do with his legs is going to be a huge factor as well. But that's only a factor if the rest of your running game is effective and inconsistent. What do you think the running game is going to look like for Oklahoma? I don't think that, you know, a one game in-house suspension for Tawi Walker, suddenly he's out of the equation. I think that he could be yeah. a big time factor this week, but I do think given the way last week's contest versus UCF ended, Maybe I'm a hook, line, and sinker here, but I think Gavin Sawchuk's going to get a lot of the work early. Uh, maybe. I, I just don't know. I, I'm at this point where I'm done guessing about what the running back rotation is going to look like because, again, as much as we want to, and I say we, as much as 
a lot of people want to bag on Marcus Major because maybe he only gets like three yards when there could have been six or whatever. I mean, he still had two carries that went for 13 yards at the end of or on that drive that gave them the go ahead touchdown late in that game. So he was a factor as well. I mean, ran for 80 yards in the game. So I'm not going to sit here and say, okay, Gavin Sawchuk had the big 30 yard run, had a few, you know, seven, eight yard runs on that. Also on that drive that was the go ahead one, not the 30 yard run that went for the TD, but uh, earlier on the go ahead drive. I'm not going to sit here and say, okay, all of a sudden he's now going to surpass Marcus major and get the heavy workload. But I think you, it would not be surprising to me to see a, a three headed monster where each guy comes out of this thing with 14, 15 carries a piece, because I do think that they will have to lean on the running game a little bit more, but I think you'll see Gavin Sawchuk be a part of that quick passing game. That's added behind the line of scrimmage where you want to just get him the ball in space. I kind of wish they would have done that as the first play to Gavin Sawchuk, as opposed to the direct snap, you know, like I know they tried to do it a couple plays later, but after he'd already fumbled the ball and then now you're going to throw him the ball, like, no, just like get him, get him a quick, easy one out in space, let him do his thing, let him get his feet wet and then go from there. And I mean, maybe we will, maybe we will see a heavy workload. They go back to the well and say, Hey, we still trust you despite how last game started, maybe give him an opportunity to get going early and see if he can be a little bit more productive out of the gate than he was against UCF. Sure. And if nothing else, I think he's finally for the first time this season earned that type of opportunity. Not, not that, you know, look, we're, we're not behind closed doors watching practice every single day. So when I say earned that opportunity, I'm talking strictly what we've seen you, I, the general public in games this season, we, we saw an incredibly impressive performance in the cheese it bowl. And then kind of that spark from saw Chuck, I don't think we've seen until again last week versus UCF in the final couple of drives. So that we we know was encouraging. And I'm curious to see is there a legitimate carryover to this Kansas game where not that uh, Oklahoma John is going to come out and, you know, throw the football five times or 15 times, right? I mean, I expect Oklahoma to try and come out and for the most part sort of be who Oklahoma is and do what Oklahoma wants to do, which right now is a better passing team than they are a throwing or a better passing team than they are a running team. And yet the conditions of the day are going to, I think, lead Oklahoma down the path of and the opponent, right? I mean, we were talking about the numbers. Kansas is not a good run defense. So the conditions, the opponent, it's sort of all, lends itself to okay let's lean on the run game in this road contest so i do think that kind of everybody or somebody could have a breakout day it's sort of everybody could have a piece of it and then if one guy takes it and no pun intended runs with it we might see somebody have a, a big time day 20 some odd carries and a bunch of yards versus kansas i really hope so i mean i really hope maybe it's gavin sawchuk just has a couple big like 40 50 yard runs you know that starts to like really separate himself as the best runner in this group as opposed to you know just churning away four or five yard carries at a time even if they run for a big number i'd love to see them get hit some big big plays in the run game to really start to build the confidence of this group offensive line running back group as well because you, you got to hit those you know there are times like yes you want to be able to grind out yardage and pick up the tough yards pick up the dirty yards that's fine but you got to hit some big plays in the running game too, to make teams respect you and, and respect your ability to, you know, make a big play. And I think that's where Gavin Sacha can come in handy and, and be a big time player for the Sooners. But I also think you're going to see Jaquay's pet away, getting some reverse action. You're going to see Gavin Freeman, Jalil Farouk. That's a big part of this offense too, is the reverse game. Uh, the, the jets, the jet sweep game, the, the screen game on the wide receivers. They're going to use all of that as an extension of what the running backs do as well. So, I mean, as much as we talk about the running backs having to have a big game, I mean, the, the wide receivers are going to have to have a big game too because they're going to have to make guys miss, you know, out on the edge and pick up, you know, some cheap yardage after the catch because you're not going to be able to get a whole lot of easy things going through the air if it's going to be as windy as they're forecasting right now. So you got to make the things happen when you're getting, you know, those at or behind the line of scrimmage, you know, screen plays, things like that. So a lot, I mean, a lot to, uh, to consider on that front, but I mean, there are areas where Oklahoma certainly holds the edge against this Kansas Jayhawks team. And we'll talk about some of that here after the break.
and snap into the NFL this season with FanDuel. It's the perfect time to get involved. You've got just a few more months of the regular season, both in college and the NFL, and there's no better time to start getting in on, on, on the betting game. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. So whether it's Dylan Gabriel's chances to win the Heisman that are sitting at plus 1,200 or Oklahoma's odds to win the national title at plus 1,300, you can get in on the action over at FanDuel right now. Oklahoma is a minus 10-point favorite against the Kansas Jayhawks. That over-under is sitting at 65.5. So if you're liking any of those odds, Go check it out. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, which includes spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Josh, so let's talk about a few of the areas in which Oklahoma does have an edge over the Kansas Jayhawks. I mean, simply in just the, the scoring aspect, Oklahoma scores more than Kansas scores. They they limit their opponents to more points than Kansas does. I mean, Kansas right now is allowing 27 points per game. Oklahoma, they're scoring upwards of what 45 points per game right now. Uh the J or sorry, 43 points per game. The Jayhawks scoring 35 points per game. The Sooners only allowing what was it? Four, 16 points per game right now. So this is a a, a team that has the edge in the area that matters the most scoring. No, that's, that's right. And I would say they have an edge at quarterback though. Mm -hmm. I do like being uh, a lot. I think that in terms of backups, you know, not named Jackson Arnold or five-star here or there. I mean, he's uh being is about as good as it gets. He, I think nationally. I mean, he'd start for, I mean, a hundred college, you know, FBS teams. Quite a few, yeah. I, I mean, 100, 80, 70, whatever the number may be. I'm going backwards, but it, it's still it's it's better a than lot. half, and and, and yeah. it's a lot of teams for sure. So uh, he's a, he's a gamer. He can absolutely go play. And uh, Oklahoma found that out themselves last year with the performance he had against them. But I do still think all of that being said, Oklahoma's got the better of the two quarterbacks. So they've they've got an edge in that regard. Something you touched on earlier the wide receivers from Oklahoma are better than the wide receivers from Kansas. So that short passing game, I think you nailed it. That is going to be potentially in a, in a day where there could be times where you're throwing into a 20 mile per hour wind gust or two. Well, you're going to have to be able to, to operate in the intermediate and in the underneath, and then uh, go take a bubble and make somebody miss and, and, and go run for a touchdown. And I think with Farouk, with Anderson, uh, with, with Stoops just in the possession reception game, uh, Petaway, Gavin Freeman. I, I think there's quite a few options for Oklahoma. Maybe uh, Brendan Thompson could be uh, a breakout week. This would be his speed would be seemingly something that could really help you in this game. Same thing again uh, with Petaway there. So I think the short passing game, Oklahoma has a, a legitimate advantage, and especially against those defensive backs, though I do like Logan. Yeah, they've got some good guys. They've got some good players out there as well. I mean, it's a it's a impressively it's an improving group, and I think they're an opportunistic group on the back end. But they still do give up a lot of yards. This is a defense that's not stopping guys uh, at a regular rate. I mean, just look at the third down defense. It, it's not super good. They're 107th nationally, allowing a third down conversion 44.4 percent of the time. Uh, the the third down offense is good, but can they stop Oklahoma's third down offense? We'll see. Uh, red, in the red zone, you know they're they're okay. They're on offense. They're pretty good. Thirty third nationally, eighty nine point three percent. But defense, they're terrible. They're tied for one hundred and twenty ninth defensively in the red zone, allowing a touchdown every time somebody gets into the red zone. That's a trend that has to continue this week. Oklahoma, do not allow them to stop you from scoring a touchdown in the red zone. Don't do it. Don't do it. This is this is the time for Oklahoma's red zone offense, which has been really, really good this year, to continue to thrive against the Jayhawks. I mean, some of the numbers you just shared, it's like the reverse of a terrible offensive team, right? It's for you to be five and two, honestly, and I know the schedule 
in some ways hasn't been great for KU. Uh, you know, the the BYU win is looking better and better. The UCF win, I still think just in terms of the fashion in which Kansas did it, was a really good win. Uh, but, man, I mean, when you're talking about being that bad on third down defense and that bad in the red zone defensively, those are a couple of things that, generally speaking, when you're that bad, probably you're not 5-2. and two. And yet, you know, that just probably speaks to how good KU is offensively. Well, and I talked a little bit about the opportunistic nature of their defense. I mean, it, it's not good, but they're tied for 30th in the nation in sacks per game. They're you know at 1.43. Sorry, that's sacks allowed per game. Tied for 36th in the nation in sacks per game at 2.57, just ahead of Oklahoma. Uh, in turnover differential, they're just behind Oklahoma as well at uh, 0.29 turnovers per game. Uh, Oklahoma is obviously second in the nation. I say just behind Oklahoma second in the nation at 1.43 turnover differential per game, Kansas 0.29 tied for 44th. So, you know, they're, they're making plays and they're creating splash plays, but they're getting a lot of giving up a lot of plays and giving up a lot of yards. And so there's an opportunity for Oklahoma to take advantage but at the same time, if you're not careful, Kansas will make you pay for a mistake. So don't make any mistakes. Be clean in your pass protection, and, and you're going to be able to win this game. Yeah, that's that's it. Pass pro, run the football effectively, take care of the football. Cliche, I know at the Helmer book of cliches, toss the graphic up, right? Yeah. But uh, it really is this game, John. I don't know how Oklahoma loses it if they take care of the football. I don't think they do. Mm -mm. No, I don't think so either. You don't want to give Kansas any extra opportunities. If you protect the ball, which Oklahoma has been really good at doing this year, then you're going to win this football game. You're just, you're more talented. Yeah. They they're very, very well coached, but you're also very, very well coached at this point. I, I think what we saw last year. Yeah, it, it happened. It was what it was, but what we're seeing this year is a coaching staff that's improved you know, everything about this team has improved. We've talked about the players on both sides of the ball, but the coaching staff has improved. And I think we've seen that just in their in-game management. They've been so much better, so much cleaner, and in-game adjustments have, have done a really, really good job. So I don't, I would not be surprised if Kansas comes out and is able to make some things happen early in this game, but I fully anticipate the Oklahoma Sooners adjusting to whatever Kansas wants to do and then being able to take control of the football game and, and win it. So, I mean, we'll, we'll talk more about our predictions and things like that. As we get into the rest of the week, we'll have our crossover with Derek Johnson of locked on Jayhawks uh, coming at you as well. But uh, man, so much, it's going to be a fun game. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be a really, really good game, but I think ultimately Oklahoma does pull out the victory in it. Uh, Josh, follow, follow Josh on Twitter. Josh, you got any other parting thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, no, just can't wait to hear from locked on Jayhawks. That'll be uh That'll be fun. That'll be fun to talk to him. And then, you know, before the week's up, let's make some predictions, shall we? That's right. It's going to be good times. 11 a.m. kickoff, big noon kickoff on Fox. Unfortunately, we don't get we don't get Gus. And man, just a disappointing, the only disappointing thing about this weekend, because it's a football weekend, but you don't get Gus. Follow Josh on Twitter at Josh on ref, myself at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. And if you enjoy what we do here on Locked On Sooners, do us a favor and go leave us a five-star review over at Apple or wherever you get your podcast. It just helps more people find out about our show, bumps us up a little bit in the ratings as well uh, through the, the rating system. So again, if you enjoy it, if you like what we do here, just do us a favor and go give us a, a review over there and give us that five-star rating. We'd greatly appreciate it. But until next time, he's Josh Helmer. I'm John Williams. We'll talk to you then. Boomer Sooner.